In this video, we can discuss about pharmacology of anterior pituitary hormones like TSH and ACTH and the different drugs used in disorders of these hormones, which is an important topic from pharmacology of drugs used in hormonal deficiency and hormonal disorders. So as we all know, hormones are secreted by different endocrine glands. Adrenocorticotropic hormone and thyroid stimulating hormones are secreted from the anterior pituitary hormones. Here we will discuss the different regulation, actions, mechanism of actions and disorders and drugs used in disorders of different uh, problem with these hormones. So let us discuss one by one. Let us start with the thyroid stimulating hormone. It is also known as thyrotrophin. In short, we can uh, call it as a TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So this is secreted from the anterior pituitary hormones and this hormone is an 210 amino acid 2 chain glycoprotein with molecular weight of 30,000 Dalton size and usually this is secreted from the thyrotropic basophilic cells of anterior pituitary, pituitary gland and the synthesis and release of TSH is by the pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus and the TSH stimulation uh, stimulate the secretion of thyrotoxin and thyroxine and triiodothyroxine from the thyroid gland which are the thyroid hormones and inappropriate thyroid stimulating hormone secretion may result in hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Now coming to the regulation of release of thy TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So as we mentioned before, the release of TSH is from anterior pituitary and the release of TSH from the anterior pituitary is controlled by a hormone thyrotropin releasing hormone which is released from the hypothalamus and this thyroid releasing hormones from hypothalamus will be stimulated only if our body is deficient of thyroid hormones like thyrotoxin and triiodothyronine. So whenever our body is deficient of T3 and T4 it will stimulate the hypothalamus to stimulate thyroid thyrotropin releasing hormone. So this thyrotropin releasing hormone will stimulate anterior pituitary and thereby anterior pituitary will release thyroid stimulating hormone and this thyroid stimulating will hormone will stimulate the thyroid gland to stimulate release of thyroid hormone like T3 and T4. Now if our body is excess of T3 and T4, this will negatively inhibit the uh, hypothalamus so that it will secrete a stomatostatin and stomatostatin will inhibit the release of TSH from the anterior pituitary. Also if there is an excess of T3 and T4, this will directly inhibit the anterior pituitary gland and thereby it will inhibit the release of TSH and thereby there will not be any production of T3 and T4 by thyroid gland. So this is the mechanism of regulation of thyroid or TSH hormone in from the anterior pituitary. Now coming to the pathological involvement, there may be two cases myxedema, this is the swelling of skin and underlying tissue giving waxy consistency and typical for portion with underactive thyroid gland. So in case of myxedema, there will be a marked uh, elevated level of TSH because of deficient feedback inhibition. And uh, in case of Graves diseases, which is an immune disorder that will result in the overproduction of thyroid hormone and due to an immunoglobulin of IgG class which will attach to the thyroid cell and which will stimulate the same manner as that of thyroid stimulating hormone. So these are the two conditions which will uh, involve TSH as a pathological involvement. In myxedema there will be an increased level of TSH and also in case of 
uh, grave diseases there will be an increased production of uh, thyroid hormone due to uh, these immuno disorders. Now coming to uses the thyroid topping, thyro TSH or thyroid stimulating uh, hormone have no therapeutic use. But uh, thyroxine is a drug of choice if there is an thyro hypothyroidism due to the thyroid stimulating hormone deficiency. So if there is a deficiency of TSH there will be a deficiency of thyroid hormone. For that we can use thyroid hormone like thyroxine and thyroidothyronine. And it, has an, uh, it can be used in a diagnostic application to differentiate the myxedema whether it is due to the pituitary dysfunction or from the pituitary thyroid uh, diseases. So these are the uses of thyroid stimulating hormone. Now coming to next and uh, uh, anterior pituitary hormone that is adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH which is also known as corticotropins. So these are uh, released from the anterior pituitary hormone from the basophilic cells of uh, corticotropes as well as lipotropic cells of the uh, anterior pituitary hormone. This is an uh, hormone with uh, 35 amino acid containing polypeptide chain and the regulation of uh, the ACTH release is controlled by again hypothalamus. So if there is any deficiency of uh, ad adrenal uh, hormones or hormones produced from the adrenal gland in our body, hypothalamus will stimulate the or it will release an hormone which is known as corticotropin releasing factor or corticotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus. So if there is any a deficiency of glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids in our body, hypothalamus will stimulate or hypothalamus will release CRF or corticotropin releasing factor or corticotropin releasing hormone. So this CRF will stimulate anterior pituitary to uh, release ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. So action of adrenocorticotropic hormone is on adrenal cortex to stimulate the adrenal hormones like glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids will uh, secreted. Now in if there is any increased secretion of this adrenal hormone like glucocorticoids or mineralocorticoid is excess in our body, it will inhibit the anterior pituitary and it will stop the ACTH secretion. And also this increasing glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoidal secretion will also inhibit the hypothalamus and thereby it will inhibit the release of corticotropin releasing factor. So anterior pituitary will not release ACTH, so adrenal uh, cortex will not be stimulated to produce glucocorticoid. So this is the mechanism of regulation of ACTH in our body. Now coming to uh, the, uh, so this is the regulation as I mentioned before, uh, hypothalamus uh, will regulate the ACTH release from pituitary through corticotropic releasing hormone and the corticotropic releasing hormone receptor on the corticotropes is, uh, is a G protein coupled receptor which will increase the ACTH synthesis as well as release by a rising systolic cyclic AMP. And the secretion of ACTH is under a circadian rhythm. Uh, there will be a peak plasma level occur in early morning and it will decrease during day and it will be lowest at the midnight. Coming to the physiological function, ACTH will promote the steroido, steroidogenesis and it will stimulate the cortisol secretion by the adrenal cortex by stimulating cyclic AMP formation in the cortical cell through a, a receptor that G protein coupled receptor and thereby it will uh, increases the availability of cholesterol for the conversion of pregnenolone which is a rate limiting step in the production of different uh, cort, uh, different adrenal hormones like gluco, mineralo and uh, weak androgenic steroid cell hormones from the adrenal gland. So uh, in short ACTH will promote the steroidogenesis and they will stimulate the cortisol secretion from the adrenal cortex. So that is the physiological function and induction of steroidogenic enzyme 
occur after the delay resulting in second phase of SCTH action. So, these are the physiological actions of adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now, coming to the pathological involvement, there are two uh, cases. First one is hypercortism or excess production of ACTH from the basophilic pituitary tumor cell which is responsible for different conditions like Cushion syndrome. So, there will be an uh, disturbances in the distribution of fat cell that is the Cushion syndrome. So, that will occur during hypercortism due to the excess production of ACTH. And there is another pathological state that is known as hypocortism which occur due to the pituitary insufficiency due to the low uh, ACTH production. So, in this case there will be a decreased uh, release of ACTH and in case of hypercortism there will be an increased production of ACTH and which may lead to Cushion syndrome. And there may be some other uh, suppressions, iatrogenic suppression of ACTH secretion and pituitary adrenal, uh, adrenal axis is the most common form of another abnormality due to uh, some drug induced adrenocorticotropic hormone release inhibition or suppression. So, these are the different pathological involvement of ACTH adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now, coming to the uses adrenocorticotropic hormone is primarily used for the diagnosis of disorders of pituitary adrenal axis. So, how can we uh, done this diagnosis. We have to inject uh, 25 international unit uh, of adrenocorticotropic hormone as IV. So, after the injection if there is an increasing plasma cortisol level uh, we can uh, confirm that adrenal uh, glands are functional and these are normal. So, this is the uh, use of adrenocorticotropic hormone. So, that is all about the pharmacology of uh, ACTH as well as TSH. Hope it is clear. Thank you for watching this video.